So what was it like working with your father on the, on the movie, though? That must be kind of fun to... Well, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, I've, I've worked with him on uh, three different movies now. He makes sure to uh, kick my ass. <laughs> so he doesn't, he, does he go the other direction instead of going easy on you because his, his son he maybe overcompensates and is a yeah. little tougher on you? Oh, absolutely. I think, I think most fathers probably would do the same thing, you know, not wanting people to think that, you know, you're getting a handout. I want you. Today, actor Scott Eastwood is here. His new films are Carmel and The Crags, plus the director of those films, Lawrence Rock, joins us. And later in the show, up-and-coming band Acidic. They're getting buzzed after South by Southwest and the Sunset Strip Music Festival. But up first, Scott Eastwood and Lawrence Rock. Great to have you guys here today. Thanks, Gregory. Appreciate See, I got it. You. I'm, I'm right you know, switched hands on you there. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> so actually, I met you guys at the screening the other night for Carmel mm -hmm. on the red carpet. Carmel by the there. Sea. Yeah, Carmel is the name by the, of the sea. movie now. Okay, you know, because when I looked it up on IMDb, I think it just said Carmel, but it's yeah. actually Carmel by the Sea. They changed it. There's an Israeli film that came out two years ago that has the same name, so they changed it to Carmel by the Sea. See, which is actually the name of the town that it was shot in. I see. Okay, okay. And uh, so how's everything with the film? I, there, was, there was a screening that night. Have you, have you had the big premiere yet? or? No, not yet. You know, the thing is, is uh, going to be heading out, you know, to the world soon. We had um, two, two completely sold out screenings, which was phenomenal. The, the public uh, desire to see the movie is really, really strong. And obviously we've got great talent involved. Um, Scott was in it and also uh, Dina Eastwood, his stepmom. And, ah, okay. uh, okay. you know, a lot of Carmel residents were in there, Miles Williams, a, a local actor, and then we had Lauren Bacall, Alfred Molina, Josh Hutcherson, Hayden Panettiere. So, sure. really strong cast, and we're just excited about the movie. It looks beautiful. So, what was it like filming up though in Carmel? Well, I think of, I always think of Doris Day mm. for Carmel, and of course yes. that other guy who was mayor up there too. Uh -huh. I know but, him. Uh, <laughs> met him once or twice, huh? Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I grew up in Carmel, so. Uh, tough to go home for a couple weeks and film. Oh, so that's actually where you were most of the time up there, okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was all filmed in Carmel. I see, okay. So, uh, yeah, it was great. Scott's character was uh, uh, kind of a surfer kid, you know, from Carmel that takes Josh Hutcherson under his wing. He pl um, Josh's character is an uh, art forgery prodigy, young kid that's getting lured into the life of crime. So the thing I really liked about directing Scott in those scenes in Carmel was he was completely natural because that's who he is. He's a surfer kid from Carmel. Well, not anymore. But, yeah. you know, it was a natural role for him, I think. Dressed you know. as if. <laughs> <laughs> he got the flip-flops, I'm thinking, yeah, you know, it's... Well, it was very fitting, because we just did a show on anxiety, so that you're, as I said, you're the opposite of anxiety when we walk in with the flip-flops. The, uh, the director didn't give the proper direction and tell him what to wear, so you can place the blame on me. <laughs> I would place it on him. Okay, I'll take it. Well, you're just in character, right? Yeah. And uh, I think the way you described him to me that night on the red carpet, you said he was uh, kind of cocky but lovable. Is that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, he's he's a he's a good guy. He's he's you know he's a, he's the mentor, really. Uh, you know, of the young the lead actor of the movie. So, it, but he's kind of this you know wild little you know cocky guy. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a guy that, you know, probably would uh, steal the neighbor's uh, daughter. Uh, daughter. <laughs> no, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, kind of a prankster, you yeah. know, a, a local kid that means well, but in a small hometown. And, and the endearing part that Scott played was that he actually takes an interest in Josh Hutcherson's character, mm -hmm. who is this tragic story of a young kid that doesn't belong there, is homeless, and, and really has some serious, serious problems. The mom's a heroin addict. So Scott's role in the film is he plays Hayden Panettiere's older brother, and Hayden, as you know, is, is the girl from Heroes, sure. and a lady from Heroes, and she's an incredible actress in her own right. I met and her brother that night. Uh, Jansen, yeah, Jansen was at the Carmel by the Sea premiere, uh, screening rather, and um, yeah, it's, it's a cool role, and it was, it was really fun to, to direct someone in that role that was so natural, and, and through the course of the making of the movie, we became really good friends, and uh, I told him about The Crags, the new movie that I want to do and uh, Scott said hey I'm, I'm interested in it. so we started building the thing together. Well, I think you, you told me probably uh, I, I remember one of the days we were filming right in Carmel by the you know by Carmel by the sea right on the ocean and uh, during our lunch break there was you know some good waves and I went out surfing and I think when I came back 
uh, that's when Lawrence pulled me aside and said, hey, you know. Uh, You're going to like this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take you to Sumatra, Indonesia, Madagascar, uh, North Africa, Hawaii, and Northern California on a surf trip. And yes, Scott, you will get paid and you will get to surf and you're going to do a good story, a great story, I believe. I really believe in So you're story. actually going to all those places on location? Yeah, yeah, we're going to, once, wow. when, once we're in the development phase right now, we're packaging the project, bringing in the producers and bringing in all the elements and obviously raising the money. But once we go into production, yeah, we'll be shooting international. This is like uh, Born Identity on steroids. Mm. It's going to be fun. Yeah. And I'm excited. I believe in Scott as, as, as an actor, I believe in his talent and met him through, through his parents who, whom I've worked with for, for a number of years. And uh, I, it couldn't be more of a thrill to do a movie like this with a good friend of mine and, and you know, enjoy the adventure of traveling around the world. It's the best of the best. So we're excited. Well, I like you had kind of that make my day kind of pose I saw on the Facebook page, I think, for Craig's with the, I think, the gun out or... Uh... <laughs> oh! Well, there was something, that, yeah, there was one, or was it, uh, it wasn't Carmel, but there was one, it was you with pointing with a gun or something. But, uh, I think I might have popped that on Facebook, I might have taken it off, I don't know. Oh, but, oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was there for a little bit. <laughs> I don't have Facebook, so I have to hear about everything that I'm on Facebook from all my friends oh. and family and... Uh, you don't have Facebook? Oh my God, that could be a show right here in itself. <laughs> I don't have Facebook. The picture I believe you were talking about was uh, shot on location with Scott in Texas. Uh, just did a, 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 a great movie called The Repub Republic of Epic, right? Uh, yeah. Or Epic? Epic. Uh, Epic. I'm not sure what it's going to you know, end up be call being called. But, yeah. Oh. But He's Epic. got some great you know, independent films he just worked on, and, and Epic is one of them, so that's where that photograph is from. I, when you said good waves, I was thinking, is that, that that's kind of that's the surfer phrase, isn't it? Right. That's what uh -huh. I'm always looking for. So yeah. when you go to those places, there will probably be some good waves. One in Hawaii and oh, yeah. Indonesia. Oh yeah. And I've actually been to all these places before, but oh, wow, wow. Uh, to go back and to be like you said, getting paid and 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 uh, to be working on a you know a great story is a dream project. The interesting, sorry to interject, oh. but the interesting thing about having Scott do this film and, and play a guy that surfs is, number one, in the script of the movie, we do not mention surfing once at all. It's simply what these oh. characters do. So we handle it very differently than, say, Point Break or something like that. And for me, as a guy that has, I have an action sports movie background. I made snowboard films and skateboard films and worked a little bit in the surf industry. To work with a young actor that actually knows how to surf and is an avid surfer and has spent a lot of time in Hawaii, I think is really gonna allow us to um, really portray the character in a realistic way that a surfer probably hasn't been well, portrayed before. Yeah, you know, it, it, one of the reasons I was really drawn to it is because it's not a surf movie. It's a movie that happens to have surfing in it and that's kind of uh, one of the storylines is that they're surfers. Um, and growing up as a surfer, you know, you, you see these movies like Blue Crush and, and you see these these kind of these Hollywood movies that try to portray surfing and they they've never really got it from mm -hmm. a real surfer's perspective. You, know, you you see a shot of somebody paddling in, you know, to a two foot wave and the next shot they're, you know, dropping into a twenty foot wave. It, it's it's hard for a real surfer to you know, to really connect to those movies. Mm -hmm. But Lawrence, being a surfer as well, really knows, I think, how to you know portray surfing in, in a in a way that surfers would want to want to see a movie made about surfing. So the Crags being not a surf movie, but a movie with that kind of content and those kind of characters, you know, we're really just excited to go for the utmost level of authenticity and quality on on every aspect of the project, but also too with the surfing because it's an opportunity to do it the way it hasn't been done before. We'll be right back. And we are back with Scott Eastwood and Lawrence Rock today from the film Crags and Carmel by the Sea. So now, but you've actually done movies in South Africa before, right? Because you were in Invictus yes. as well, mm -hmm. and Crags is partly set in, or going to be in South Africa. A different region. Um, Invictus was shot in South Africa, and it was dealing with Nelson Mandela, and we're going um, very likely up to Liberia and some of the more dangerous areas of uh, the northern part of the continent. Well, the reason I was asking, and this is, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm using my time here to, uh, I have a trip coming up to South Africa, oh, and I thought, since yeah. you've been there, what do you, you, what do you think about, out for you? yeah, sure. what do you think about South Africa? <laughs> where are the good places? to go. I don't know about his part about the most dangerous places, uh -huh. but maybe we're the least dangerous places. <laughs> the least dangerous places. Well, you, you know, uh, filming in South Africa, we were 
predominantly in Cape Town. Mm. Uh, we did a little bit in Johannesburg for Invictus, but uh, you know, Cape Town is really the place you, you want to go. Mm. Uh, Johannesburg is uh, you know, not as pretty. Not as pretty, uh, okay. But uh, yeah, uh, Cape Town is gorgeous, and so is Durban. Um, Durban's a little more hot, and uh, it's, it's also pretty dangerous, but uh, Cape oh. Town is, has got that great mild temperature, and it's good. I heard something about uh, Mossel Bay too. I think it is with the great white sharks or something. So, the, I think I don't know if I'm saying it right. Oh. Mossel, Mossel Bay, something like that. Sounds good something to me. Something with the great white shark. There's That's a lot of sharks there. Yeah. That's <laughs> all I know. I, I'll probably stay out of the water, as mm -hmm. they say in the movie, get out of the water. But uh, so when you did Invictus, though, since you mentioned some of the more dangerous, I'm not sure with a big crew in that. But did you have a lot of security around, or how did they handle? Yeah, like, yeah, we all had security. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm not really into that, so I. Uh, you know, I was kind of. You were just walking around program. like this, weren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the flip flops but, uh, <laughs> And my dad's the same way. You know, he, you know, he had probably five security guards, but you know, he would just leave and not tell them where he was going. And because you know, that's what we're kind of used to. Freak know. out the security people, right? Like, <laughs> uh oh, where'd he go? <laughs> yeah. So, what was it like working with your father on the, on the movie, though? That must be kind of fun. To... Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I've, I've worked with him on uh, three different movies now. He makes sure to uh, kick my ass. <laughs> so he doesn't. He, does he go the other direction instead of going easy on uh, you because it's, the sonny maybe overcompensates and is a little yeah. tougher on you? Oh, absolutely. I think I think most fathers probably would do the same thing. You know, not wanting people to think that you know you're getting a handout or you know he makes me work for it. I've auditioned for every movie that. I've been in, and every movie that you haven't seen me in, of his, um, you know. So it's he picks who's right for the right for the role. Wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah. But I loved your comment though. You said on the on the red carpet that night though. When I, I thought, okay, this this guy is cool. When I asked you about your father though, and you said he's a robot, <laughs> and I love that because of the way he just keeps cranking out the movies. Yeah. And as I was saying to somebody earlier, you know, so on the one hand, I mean, I think he's one of the few directors that makes a movie every single year. It seems because the mm. producers go, they have the screenings, and I'm always there every fall when like the new Clint Eastwood movie comes out. Yeah. And, um, and in fact, I did the Q and A with the one producer for who's on all of his films, um, whose name Ro is uh, Rob Lorenz. Yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah. So I introduced him was the moderator for that. But so there's always the new Clint Eastwood. But the thing is, so it's not just the next Clint Eastwood movie, but there have been damn good movies too. And I really, and I'm even a movie critic, and I'm actually very really tough on, but what can you say after Million Dollar Baby, Gran Torino, Invictus, I mean, all of those were just quality films. So that's mm. quite a Thank you. good environment to grow up in, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. I was even impressed by Hereafter, even though it got knocked a little bit by the critics. Um, you know, it, it really showed some depth to his filmmaking, and it really showed that he was interested in, in doing something out of the box for him. Uh, well, you know what I thought when know? I watched the film? In fact, that, that's the one that I did the Q&A for. Um, I thought, you know, this is like a French film. Mm -hmm. I was actually impressed. To me, it yeah. really was more of an artistic kind of, I can see why maybe the main stream audience, but it really had more of like an art kind of, Yeah, I thought this is an artistic for film. In fact, Newsweek, I think at the time, here I go from my Q&A that night, but called it, you know, Clint Eastwood's masterpiece. Actually. Yeah. They gave him a very positive yeah. review for it. And uh, so. Yeah. So, you know, for me as a, as a young director to do my movie and, and to build a, 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 a movie around Scott, like the Crags and, and work with him and having met him through, you know, Dina, his stepmom and, and, and his father, for me, you know, it was a, a great yeah, now, opportunity. When you said you had worked with both of them, can uh -huh. you tell me more about what you... Well, I, I worked for Dina Eastwood for the past uh, anywhere from seven to ten years. We did a, a number of philanthropic documentary projects for the Make-A-Wish Foundation, mm -hmm. Foundation mm -hmm. and and uh, worked with Reese Witherspoon on that. Then um, Dina and I did uh, a neat little half hour documentary on Ruth Woods, who is Scott's grandmother and Mr. Eastwood's mother. And she was 94 at the time, and we had a great time. We did this fantastic half hour documentary, which will probably never ever see the life of day, light of day. But it was about this incredible woman and her unique relationship with her son. And um, so, you know, I worked with them on a number of different projects. My most recent thing I did with him was The Eastwood Factor. I oh. uh, worked with Morgan Freeman and Mr. Eastwood and, and oh. shot the, um, the last 10 minutes of the film, uh, which is all take, takes place in Carmel. So. And so, and of course, you worked with Morgan Freeman as mm. well in Invictus. So, what was that? I mean, besides your father, but as I said that night, you know, so Lauren Bacall, Morgan Freeman, you've already worked with some pretty fantastic people. Yeah. Must be, uh, yeah. Lawrence yeah. Rock. Lawrence Ross. <laughs> just kidding. Just, yeah, kidding. just a joke. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I've been really lucky, you know, to be able to you know, to work with the people that I've been able to work with and and learn a lot from them. Uh, I was just having we were just on an interview, a phone interview this morning, and we were talking about the same thing. 
and just uh, just getting to uh, to really learn from you know the greats and people who have really mastered the medium of film. It's uh, you know it's been my my pleasure. My thing that I one of the things I like most about working with Scott is. Um, his ego's in his back pocket. You know, he's there to learn, and he has a deep appreciation for the masters and the people that came before him. And as a as a director, you know, when you're building a project around someone, you want to know that they have that ability to look within themselves, see how they can improve their craft, and learn from others. And uh, you know, it's a, a comforting thing for me to to see that sort of thing and and to realize that hey, here's a dedicated actor and he's working towards doing the best product that he can, creating the best product that he can, and it motivates me. So it's a fun collaboration, and we're really looking forward to this next movie. It's gonna be good times. Yeah. All right, well, Chris, in our final minute here, um, so does your father ever have any advice for you? I mean, with his background, I mean, does he ever say, you know, do this, don't do that, or does he just let you find it on his own? Or has he ever sit you down and say, okay, son, this is the way the business works, and you gotta, or how does that? No, no, it throws you in the deep end. <laughs> and uh, you sink or swim. But uh, yeah, I'd say he probably, if anything, just tells you to listen a lot, you know? In, in, in any facet in life, I think, is it really important. To, like, like Lawrence said, to learn from those who came before. You know, uh, there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. And I think wisdom is for people who learn from, you know, people who've done it from before. And finally, um, is there any other word on who else might be in the Crags? Have you worked with um, We've got some pretty big names in the works. And it's really interesting to see the people that are coming forward and, and wanting to work on it. Um, I had some chats um, with Billy Boyd from Lord of the Rings. Okay. He was in Carmel by the Sea with me. You know, just talking to him about the script and the movie and, you know, trying to figure out if there's something there for him. I, I like to work with um, people that I enjoy working with over and over again. I want to build a crew and build a team. So, uh, be fun to work with him again. But as far as some big names, people I could tell you about, nothing yet. But, okay, well, uh, we'll stay works. tuned. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate Pleasure. it. Lawrence thank Rock, you. Yeah. Scott Eastwood. We'll keep an eye out for Carmel by the Sea and the Crags. We'll be right back. And we are back. Joining me now is Michael Goster, the lead singer for the band Acidic. Great to have you here today, Michael. Oh, it's a very acidic day. How are you doing? <laughs> and actually, I'm flattered. I hear you had your hair redone just for me today. Of course. I found out I was coming on the Big G show. <laughs> and I was like, well, That's I'm going right. to be a total smurf today, man. But you, yeah, you never know, though, with the blue, though. What if your hair, like, blended in, though? Man, and if you, you can green screen my hair out yeah, and have it doing hey. some crazy stuff while this is going, like sharks swimming through my hair, like, I will We're gonna totally. We're going to have some fun in post. We're going to yes. mess with you. I will totally give you guys a shout out at our next show. And by the way, it was Good. great to she uh, see you at our whiskey show the yes, other night. Yeah, yeah, I came out and actually, I, and it was fun to go out because I haven't been to a live show in so long. Oh, and, I'm and, so and glad whiskey. you had the opportunity. So, yeah. yeah. And, what I, but you were so wound up. I mean, actually, <laughs> like I, I was having trouble following you because you were like upstairs and you yes. were yes. all over the place. Yeah. So you, you were not just like on stage. Let me just say were. that we really should be endorsed by Red Bull. I mean, it is ridiculous how much energy we exhibit <laughs> on stage. And we love it. And I mean, come on, we're at home on stage, man. It's exactly not, not where we only belong. at home. Yeah, I mean, I, when you say somebody owned it, I mean, yeah, you were just like, and not even there was no barrier. You were just out there in the audience, so you were all over the place. My whole so. thing is, if I get on stage, I am there playing my guitar. If people are gonna like it, they will like it. And you know what? I'm gonna have the best time possible because then people will be more favorably inclined to listen. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> now. I will even, you've gotten a great review on um, what's it, Best New Band said. One of the better <laughs> albums to come out in 2010, which when you consider how many albums come out of the year, that is That is a huge compliment. compliment yeah. you know? And I know you did, what, South by Southwest? We did South by Southwest. We've done Sunset Strip Music Festival a couple years back. We played with everybody from the used to 50 Cent at Bamboozle. Right now, we're in the process of making two albums. Okay. One with the producer of the Sticks and Carla Santana, and one with a guy who's worked with people like Avril Lavigne and Jason Mraz, and people of that sort of uh, nature and uh, yeah, we're going in two separate directions and we're trying to you know split a fork in the road and decide what our final trajectory is going to be. So but you could be the next Avril Lavigne. When, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know I think there would be some surgery involved in there and that's for a different segment ladies and gentlemen but no uh, you know we're having a great I time doing what we're doing. Can you do that? Will you do complicated for me? Oh sorry. Where would you have to go and make things? No. Um, I can do the system of a down cover she did. million hits on YouTube. Hey, 200 million. I don't know. My, 
my manager standing back there and he's looking at me like, I'm going to yell at you on the car ride back home. And you know what? I'm having such a great time with it here today that I really just couldn't care less about that. But I, what I like that night though too, that you really did have kind of an eclectic mix of music because yeah. you did a Beatles song. Uh, nobody does the Beatles cover. I mean, because it's it's kind of a it's sacrilege in a way. And even us, we get afraid to play it sometimes mm. because it's the Beatles, you know. So it can go one way, and people love it. Or if people are diehard Beatles fans, they they can take it the wrong way. So just the fact that we're able to pull it off the way we are is just oh, it's a miracle. I mean, I, I'm so happy with the way that it's presented to the public, and we've gotten a great reaction from it. And then apart from that, I mean, we do everything from like 90s party cover songs to yeah. then we play all our original stuff. And I mean, so we, now are, are you the songwriter too? Or I'm the principal you? songwriter, yes, but all the guys have their voices heard in the band, which I really find great. And uh, the more democratic you can make a, a, an intellectual decision making process, like writing a song, you know, the, the happier you're going to be with the product because there's just more information to put in there. So, what is your background when you mentioned intellectual? Because for a rock band, sometimes you think. I mean, not that. I mean, there isn't a very creative side. Yeah, music, how you doing? But you sound I'm very. Say, uh, yeah. Are you? What are you working on? Your PhD or something or what? Um, no, I'm the, I, uh, no, I'm I'm doctor of uh, crap, ABD, all but dissertation. Oh. oh. Yes. <laughs> but um, you know, apart from that, you know, you got to be intel. You have to be intelligent on some level to relate with anybody. So you know, just uh, the more you can gain from everybody you meet, and the more you read, and the more you write, man, it just sets you off on a you know a chemical reaction and I I mean being just the ability to make eye contact has been so important in our relationship with everybody we've ever known so you know I mean we're not well, the especially if you're out there performing yeah, yeah and we're not the typical rock band that you know that's gonna sit back and let you know let time pass them by and you know wait for it you know we're gonna go out and we're gonna pound the pavement every day now what do you think it's such an interesting time in the music business because on the one hand okay it's been nobody knows what time it is in the tough, music business right, exactly but on the one hand it's very exciting though yeah. Between you know YouTube and the downloads. Oh, and, totally. You know it's and Charlie Sheen too. Don't forget about Charlie <laughs> Sheen. We have the Tiger Blood, man. We have the Tiger Blood. <laughs> is that your role model? Is Charlie no, Sheen? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I tried. I tried to tone it down at least like a good 150 percent from Charlie Sheen. I mean, <laughs> well, one day when I see you making the rounds on all the news show, I'll say I knew him when. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> no, watch. I'll be sitting cross-legged with an orange fan right here. Be. Yeah, man. But he's oh. winning. He's winning. Oh, no. What do you call it? winning? You know, I watched that for the first time a couple days ago. And I was like, really? It was so impressive that I had to post a Facebook status, like oh, on the band's sure, Facebook. Uh, and I was like, turns out that Charlie Sheen is really just high on acidic. We were surprised <laughs> as well. I was going to say, he's actually probably like higher than the rock band, right? Yeah. You, maybe you guys are yeah. more down to earth. Than I know. The, uh, well, have you heard he's working with uh, Carmen Electra's fiance and Snoop Dogg on, an, uh, on a pro uh, Oh, I've gone some kind of music project. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's cool. I, I know that because we got a chance to tour with Filter, and um, Robert Patterson is the guitar player. And wow. that's, that's really I mean, cool. I, I wish him well, but, and I have nothing, and I think but he's, he's crazy. great. He does. Yeah, but at this point, Charlie I, I would Sheen, think. You are crazy. Come to a show. We love you. Oh, got an invite if you're right watching. There. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, uh, maybe you could do a song with him. Oh, that'd be awesome. You know, I oh, you call it winning. You, okay, winning. right here. We're gonna call it winning. Right? Yeah. A song called Winning. And, yes. And pitch it to Charlie. Sheen. Fight to compete. Need to drink tiger's blood. Need to live with two strippers. Mm, those are the lyrics right <laughs> no, uh, there. Goddesses. They're goddesses. Not, they're not strippers. Oh, they're, they're not goddesses. strippers. They're goddesses. Well, goddesses. I mean, fine line. You go to Vegas, they're calling them goddesses too. You know. <laughs> yeah. And I think there were the openings for more goddesses too. But that's <laughs> Can you ever have too many goddesses? You know, you he's know? the biggest <laughs> advocate of polygamy I know outside the state of Utah, probably. Yeah, and well, is, and is Denise Richards still anyway? A lot of people are coming and going from that house and in the bathroom. Are people still locked in the bathroom? I don't know. Still? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that was anyway. Yeah. See, this is what you have. This is, but as a rock musician, yeah. you should learn for this because, right? It's you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Shock so value gotta, really yeah, does yeah. well. You'd be surprised. I mean, I, it's not why I got blue hair, but you know, I decided to get blue hair after we got back from our tour of Europe, touring for all the army bases, and we played over New Year's and got to you know spend some time with our troops. And I came back, I was like, what am I gonna do oh, to so set myself what apart? Was, so you act in. Europe. Yes. Wow. Oh, we spent New Year's in Kosovo in Germany, and I'll tell wow. you, Kosovo looks like a war zone. 
But oh, Germany <laughs> is absolutely beautiful, and you'd be surprised because you know we had the both sides of the spectrum. We had the you know the camp army base, you know, with the with the mess hall, and then we went to Ramstein Air Force Base, and that was you know full mall, full you know like Mall of America status, wow. and you know you have all the hundreds of thousands of people, and they're all living with their families on the base, and it's wonderful to see. And the Air Force really treats their personnel with respect. Well, I'm sorry, Michael, we're almost out of time, so I will thank you right now. But we're going to close with you doing a song. So absolutely, thank you. For thank you so her, much. Sir. It's such a pleasure to be on. Your show. And what are you going to do for us? I'm going to play a song called Closer to the Sun, and uh, I'm, here's a little preview. Thanks for watching.